In this video, we'll be looking at blood vessels. So we'll look at the different kinds of blood vessels that we find in the human body and in their structures. So blood vessels are a continuous system. So that means they are all connected, connected of tubes in which blood is transported from the heart to all of the tissues of the body and then back to the heart. Now, this is a very vast system. If you take all of the blood vessels in the human body, so the three types that we get are arteries, capillaries, and then veins. If you take all three of those types and you connect them from end to end, that would be over a hundred thousand kilometers long. That is extremely far. If you go from Witbank to Cape Town, for example, that's only a thousand six hundred kilometers. So if you go from the Earth to the Moon, that's around 380,000 kilometers. So it's almost a quarter of the way to the Moon if you take all of the blood vessels from end to end in the human system and extend them. That's very vast. So looking at this diagram on the right hand side, this is the human circulatory system. So they have removed all of the muscle and all of the, all of the bones and they've only left the circulatory system. So as you can see here, it's, you can just imagine how it is 100,000 kilometers far or long if you would extend that. Because some of these uh, capillaries are microscopic, so you won't even see it on something like this. But just look at the size of the aorta there. It is massive over there. So the aorta, as I mentioned in a previous video, is about the size of a hose pipe. So it's very thick as it has to have, be able to pump the blood uh, from the heart and have that blood going with an extremely high pressure being distributed to the rest of the body. But yeah, it's very interesting to see how many blood vessels there are in the human body. So let's get started with that. Let's look at arteries first. So arteries transport blood away from the heart and the reason they transport blood away from the heart is because arteries carry oxygenated blood so blood that is rich in oxygen because it just got that oxygen from the lungs now this blood flows at very high pressure because it has to go to all of the organs and to all of the extremities of the body so it has to flow at a very high pressure and because of that let's look at the structure of a uh, artery here on the left hand side. So arteries have basically three layers to them. So they've got an outer connective tissue layer, then they've got a very thick muscular layer uh, that will help them pump the blood to the rest of the body and then they've got an inner endothelium layer. This white portion that I'm now coloring in, that is called the lumen and that's the area in which the blood will be flowing. Now arteries when they become smaller, when they branch into smaller pieces, we call them arterioles. So if you've got an artery like this, they can branch into smaller pieces that are arterioles and those arterioles will eventually branch into capillaries. We'll look at a diagram of that in just a bit. So let's look at veins next. So veins transport blood to the heart. So they're bringing blood from all of the organs and extremities to the heart. And the reason for that is they are carrying deoxygenated blood as oxygen has just been given off to all of the organs and tissues. So veins, when they branch off into smaller pieces of themselves like arteries here at the top, we call those smaller branches venules. And then blood is pumped at a lower pressure in veins than it is, for example, in arteries. And because they are pumping at a lower pressure, they have to have valves in them. So if we look at this diagram here at the bottom, representing a vein, um, veins will sit in between muscle. So your skeletal muscles that enable you to lift your arms, to walk, perform your daily functions, veins sit in between them. And the reason for that is that these muscles will actually help the veins pump the blood upwards because this now has to go to the heart. So when you are walking or moving, your muscles will contract and that contraction actually squeezes onto the vein and it forces the blood upwards. And as I said, veins have valves. So there's one of those valves. This just ensures because the blood is moving at a lower pressure that the blood doesn't flow back 
and it only goes up one way. Now the structure of a vein in comparison to arteries is very similar. They also have the three layers. The size of the layers just differs. So the major difference that we can see is the muscle layer of the veins that is so much smaller than in arteries and then the lumen is much bigger than it is in arteries. Moving on to capillaries, so capillaries are the smallest, they can be microscopically small and they only are made up of one layer which is the endothelium and then they also have a lumen. Now because they are so microscopically small red blood cells actually have to move through in a single file. They can't move uh, next to each other like they would in veins and arteries. Capillaries are so small that it only allows for um, red blood cells to move in a single file. And what this then does is it slows down the blood flow so that diffusion can happen. Because if we go down here, capillaries will branch off in between organs and different kinds of tissue so that that process of diffusion can happen so that um, there's an exchange of food which is nutrients oxygen and then carbon dioxide so that exchange can take place so if we look at this diagram this has got arteries veins and capillaries in one so this is an artery and remember if an artery branches off and becomes smaller it becomes an artery hole now these artery holes will branch off further and then we are left with this network like structure which is then the capillaries so the capillaries are very tiny so what will happen this will be for example surrounding an organ um, and then the blood will flow drop off oxygen and take up carbon dioxide and so forth now the blood is richer in carbon dioxide still in the same capillary network than oxygen so then the blood in the capillaries becomes deoxygenated blood that will then go and branch off into venules remember a venule is a smaller piece of a vein and then those venules will become uh, part of the uh, vein again that will go to the heart um, enter the heart through the biggest of them all which is the vena cava so that's the basics of blood vessels it's really not that hard as long as you understand this diagram you'll be fine remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all new videos that will be posted